All right, guys, we are back, back for another one, honey. I'm going to be uh, reading some of uh, y'all comments about the whole um, video I did on AL Acts, what LAMH producers did to Kiki. And Tisha regrets not making up with Kiki now that Kiki is gone. So make sure you check that out and why that is so, like, problematic. And, honey, I am a good judge of character. I am, honey. Okay? I am, I am. Because I told y'all, Letitia Scott ain't no good. Told y'all. Very performative. Very. She wanted nothing to do with Kiki, you know, when Kiki was on this earth. Um, so one person says, A.L. should ask what he did to Kiki. He is the one that caused her to lose her job. He taped her without her permission. He does that to a lot of people. He does that to a lot of people. And speaking of A.L., y'all know I did the video on Bader's. Um, and it comes from Dr. Phil's book, Life Codes. Okay, y'all make sure y'all go and check, check that out, honey, and support Dr. Phil. Listen, that book is the truth. That is my book, honey. But I'm also going to be reading from that book again, so make sure you stay tuned, because after we are done talking about this, we're going to get to Claudia and Al and Funky and Armand. Okay, and I will be taking the book, honey, and tying it into that situation, honey. Okay, sad case, sad case, honey. TGIF has been canceled, okay? All right, so another person says he's part of the problem. He used her for clout. Another person says Kiki was heartbroken for many reading from... For many reasons. Ooh, child, can't talk. <laughs> Starting with her childhood, everything that came out during the show and everything that followed didn't help. She's free now. Rest well, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, f I still feel bad for Kiki because she was, she was young, just a few years older, you know, than me. So... And she had a husband and children, and I know her husband, like, really loved her. I could just tell how, <laughs> y'all remember how he was about to get at Marceau, and Marceau, he, he just was walking towards Marceau, and Marceau kept uh, hiding behind people, honey. I was like, uh-huh, talk that chickadee now, big toenail head, talk it now. I'm sorry, but her throwing that drink on Tisha, baby. That was TB Gold. Um, it was. I'm sorry. Because it was like Tisha went out of her way to try to make Kiki look stupid. And then the joke ended up like being on you, Tisha. It really did. I know you wish you would have said something to her when she was at the table steady trying to talk to you. Okay. But, once again, Tisha don't feel like she did anything wrong. Okay? I just ignored her, you know, which is very rude, which is very passive-aggressive. And you did that because you didn't want to hear anything bad about your husband. Okay? You don't want to hear nothing, you know, bad about him. You don't want to hear what may be the truth. Okay? You don't want to hear it. So you will never be like Mel and, you know, do something about the situation. I think that man could play in your face and you will find a way to lie and to deny, you know, what he's did to you. I saw it at that reunion. The reunion when you pulled them damn puppets out. I said, oh, <laughs> I said, oh, I see it. And then you took all day to admit that he was being inappropriate in the marriage and, you know, going back and forth with the girl after she sent him a booty pic and inappropriate, disrespectful. Okay? 
And then I know there will be people that say, yeah, but you know, none of you all ever had proof that he really stepped out, that he, he really cheated. And hell, if there was anything, Tisha don't want to hear it. And Tisha, the problem that the audience has with her is her getting up on Love and Marriage Huntsville saying, oh, you know, um... I have never experienced that in my marriage. And you was trying to throw your husband up in Melody's face and you threw in her face the fact that her husband was out here cheating on her. Low blow. Especially to somebody that you once considered to be a friend. That's how I knew Tisha ain't no good. But I think a lot of people skip over her antics because she's very subtle with it right? She's very subtle with it. Um, but I, you know, I, I know her character. She plays the victim. Go back to the season one reunion. You go hear Melody call her out. She talk all that shit and then try to act like a victim and don't nobody want to hear it. Oh, woe is me. Oh, everybody's always attacking me. Now she's trying to get at people before they, you know, before they get to her. Okay? And your your own husband, honey, he ain't defending you. Because he know you part of the damn problem. That's probably what that is. All right, let's get back to these comments. Mel helped Kiki get home with the plane ticket and talked... And she talked to Mel all the way home and didn't say how she felt to Mel. Mel got Kiki on the show when Tisha didn't help her. Yeah, Tisha had Kiki on the show, but, it, but in a very limited capacity. You never wanted that girl to shine. You never did. You always wanted her to be seen as beneath you. That is why. That is why you thought it was okay for your husband to go out here and and mention her addiction issues and she needs to pass a test and somebody needs to call the police. Okay? So, you can tell how somebody looks at somebody through, you know, the different things that they say to the person the different things that they recommend that the person needs, okay? She always needs a D-R-U-G test, okay? Because of past issues. Y'all took her past issues and wanted to make it into her identity, okay? We didn't get to really hear much about her being a professor or her, and we heard a mention of that a few times, but never, you know, never the way that we really wanted to, you know, hear about it. We didn't really get to hear her expound upon that, okay? So you got to pay attention to that. And then I would hear Tisha say, oh, well, you know, she just wants the life that I have. See, Tisha is very insecure, and insecure people are always comparing themselves to other people. They are so jealous of people, but then they will have the nerve and the audacity to think that somebody is jealous of them. Ask me how I know I've experienced it. Person was just like Latifah, copying and pasting all my ideas, honey, and then trying to come back like, they came up with it. It's like, boo-boo, oatmeal, pie face. Stop playing. Okay? Stop playing. You could play Uno. You could play Monopoly. But, bitch, don't play with me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Listen. Don't do it. So, yeah. That's what insecure people do. They're always accusing other people of being jealous of them. Remember, Mel is so jealous of my marriage because we we still together. Child, (laughs) she ain't jealous of your marriage. Not at all. But it's a lot of fans that really believe that nonsense. It's crazy. Um... Kiki should not have came to the show, and she should have focused on her health. I disagree. She 
you know, she had every right to be on the show. All of those people have issues. All of them. In some kind of way. Ain't nobody on that show perfect. So Kiki, I I love Kiki. I, she was everything that Tisha wasn't. That's why I loved her. Everything. Outspoken. No nonsense. She would go up against a man, honey. Okay, she would not cold switch for a man. Okay? And, you know, I loved her relationship with her husband. I loved Kiki. Y'all know I did. Oh, another person says it's AL's fault because he's the one that got her fired. He really wants to blame it on Melody and the producers. Who's giving AL information? His best friend, Wanda. And that's crazy how him and Wanda is so cool. He used to dog her, throw her under the bus. Um, and this is, uh, what I really want you guys to start paying attention to is start looking at people's patterns of behavior because they are always showing you who they are. I told y'all in one of my videos, I feel like AL is a baiter, a backstabber. Somebody that be betrays people. Somebody that gets close to people on purpose. And, you know, they get all this information out of people and they weaponize it and use it for a later date. That's not a friend. All this recording people and threatening to play the recordings behind a paywall. And, and then sometimes you can hear it for free on his channel. Yeah, it's... It's sickening. Gotta, like, anybody that, like... That's why I'm looking at Stormy halfway crazy. Because it's like, girl, haven't you seen how he has did Mel? How he has did Kiki? Okay, he went in on the Scots. Now he cool with them. Ain't no way in hell. Tisha and Marceau. He interviewed the people that they were being sued by, you know, and they cool with him, and he's free to come up to the black. It would never be me, ever. Now, the person says, fame is a hell of a drug. Sometimes we need to look at things for what they are worth. We do not know what Kiki was dealing with internally. Can we just let her rest in peace for the sake of her husband and children? Now, the person says, why did he delete the messages he had up that he said Kiki texted? He can also be sued because in Alabama, both parties have to agree to be recorded. He is one sick individual. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? The same can be said with the Claudia Jordan situation. Al Reynolds. People are you know, blaming Al Reynolds for the demise of TGIF, you know, that show on Fox Soul. Um, yeah, people are saying he's a baiter. He's a user. He used Star Jones, you know, to get cool with her friendship circle. And once he got in, once he married her and, you know, got, got what he wanted out the situation, honey, he didn't want her, um, you know, and then all of a sudden it seemed like he's, you know, gay, you know, he, he goes the other way, it's just like, child, and it's crazy because the people were saying everybody knew he was gay, but star child. Sad case, sad case. But yeah, you know, people are saying that he's going to eventually backstab Funky. And it's sad because I really liked all three of them together. I love their chemistry. I, of course, watched TGIF because of Funky, like many of you. He was the talent, the brilliance, the entertainment. He was the one that was making them go viral for all the right all the right reasons, and then some wrong reasons, okay, you know, but Funky just has that um, personality, you know, where he can be ratchet, he could be a little bit ghetto, okay, you know, ghetto, a little bit hood, but he could be intellectual, um, yeah, I, I I feel like he knows how to code switch very well, honey, okay? So, yes, I, 
you know, I really like him and has a very charismatic personality. Claudia was good being a host and, you know, she's beautiful, but I picked up on something in Claudia's character and we go, we go get up into that because she keeps saying she keep getting screwed over and by these people and, you know, some of the same stuff keep happening to her. She keep getting people these six figure jobs and they turn on her. See, when that keeps happening over and over and over again, and you are looking at the wrong people. You need to start looking within. Okay, and we go get off. We go get off into it in a minute. Now the person says Destiny needs to be off the show because she doesn't have a storyline. She does have a storyline. It's called Moses and Sonny. They keep talking about me, and I'm gonna talk about them. Um, Stormy, not Stormy. I told you it's too many weather-related names. Sonny is on the show to my man us to death to my husband he chose me he's he was never faithful to destiny she's not worth being faithful to I'm the better choice that is that's her storyline her and Moses so they both can go okay and I stand by what I say um you know, no matter if I like Destiny or not, you guys, we, we can't argue with what I see. You know, like, I am able to be objective like that. I think what happens, unfortunately, with Love and Marriage Huntsville is people want to conflate things. And well, look at how she did Mel. Well, look at how she did LB. And she must have did something to Sonny and Moses. And she didn't do nothing to Sonny or Moses. Technically, they did something to her, and but you gotta look at how they have so much smoke and vitriol for her. And like I said before, I believe Moses got with Sonny to get back at Destiny. And men are very spiteful like that. They will hook up, they love hooking up with women you know or used to be cool with or cool with. They love hooking up with your neighbors. They love that. Like the more they can embarrass you and try to make you look stupid, the better. And there's always some dumb bitch, and this time with a big forehead, that is willing to do the job that is up for the job and as women we have to do better because this is ridiculous but yeah anytime you gotta keep pointing at your damn ring and and now you all you know all highfalutin and you oh well I'm going to expose why the barbecue, why the Chick-fil-A, why Mr. Thanksgiving, I'm going to announce why he left you and you're not making destiny look bad, sweetie. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at how pitiful and pathetic you are and how low your self-esteem is. But Sonny got money and Sonny is educated. You can be all of that, Okay could be all of that and be in a burning house we seen it on bell collective hell we seen it on love and marriage huntsville these women got degrees and they in burning houses niggas that cheat lie disrespect so child it don't matter how many how, how many coins you got in the bank you could still be in a burning house okay you could still be in a burning house. And Sonny is in a she's in a burning house. Because everything that man did to Destiny and those other women that she claims she is so much better than, guess what? He will do it to her. And she has nobody to blame but herself. And if, if Sonny has any friends, y'all need to pull the bitch to the side and tell her, bitch, pause. Okay? You need to pause. Okay? Shout out to Queen Sheba, honey. You need to pause. You need to stop. You need to think. You need to reflect. You and your forehead need a time out. Okay, for real. For real. Whenever you keep coming at a woman like that, but, but why you didn't? And when she was arguing with Destiny, 
but um you didn't answer the phone and girl what i'm gonna answer the phone for and you already done married the man you already sleeping with him okay you already all on my leftovers what the hell we got to talk about you don't give a damn about her feelings but well, this could be my husband. Out of all the niggas in the world, that could be your husband. You could have picked somebody else. But this is attractive to you. Sonny wanted this drama. I'm here to tell you guys. It isn't all about love. You got to really look at people's intentions. Because I'm here to tell you, if this is all about love, that's what we would hear about me and my man, we on vacation. We we making ba- that's what all I would talk about in my businesses. And I would promote whatever I'm working on. That is what you need to talk about. The more you talk about destiny, lets me know this is nothing but a setup trauma bond for you niggas to get together, flaunt this relationship. That's gonna be over as soon as your ass is off TV. Okay? Catch. Okay, some of y'all off TV, this shit is going down the drain. So, yeah, the more you, you know, and y'all gotta, y'all gotta think a little bit deeper. But, yeah, this isn't about, oh, you just can't help who you fall for. You That's like saying you can't help who you sleep with. Yes, you can. Who are you? Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, you can't see. You know, you can't make a, a, a good choice, a good decision that's going to, what, lead you to be on the right path. Okay. So, yeah, don't let these little sayings and cliches, don't let that distort your mind. You gotta take responsibility. You do. And her hooking up with Moses was not just about love. It was to prove something to Destiny. I think she's jealous of Destiny. You could say what you want about Destiny. Destiny is beautiful. She is, and she knows how to put herself together. Is she immature? Yeah. She has some arrested development issues. She does. Okay? So, I'm not here to negate that. But, yeah, Sunny is trying to compete where she don't compare. And she's using Moses to do it. And, you know, just throwing a man in another woman's face, it never ends well. Just never. I've seen so many do it, and I bet they regret it now. Because <laughs> they was my man, and he chose me, and he this, and I didn't have them problems. And then, uh, fast forward, oh, boo-boo, oatmeal pie face. <laughs> <laughs> he did he did this to me and girl we tried to tell you about that nigga you didn't want to listen okay you didn't want to listen listen okay so another person says i don't blame mel for anything because kiki should have known better like i said you know mel tried to look out for kiki it's unfortunate I feel like Kiki was trying to play a game where she pleased everybody and didn't properly look out for herself. You have to look out for yourself. You have to have boundaries with people, especially bloggers. (laughs) You know, you do. Okay, because all these bloggers are not trying to be your friend. They trying to, to get a good story. That's it. You know, I've been asked, like, why you don't talk to certain people? And I'm not saying that I never will, you know, I'm not here to say that. But, you know, there's nobody out that I would really want to talk to. I would want to talk to Tia Mori, Jada Pinkett, like them type of people. Them the people I really, like, admire and look up to. Everybody else, you know, it's cool seeing them on the show. Did I mention my girl Nene Leaks? I do like Nene. You know, but everybody else, I'm not, you know, I'm not press, honey, okay? 
Um, AL should have sleepless nights. God sees it all. Guilt and greed runs heavily with this group on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Um, another one of you says that AL needs to let it go. No, he's not going to let it go. He's going to, you know, try to capitalize off of all of this. You know, you have to remember when you are dealing with a baiter that they feel entitled. They feel entitled to your life. I've had so many people be in proximity to me, whether they be neighbors, co-workers, they feel entitled to be in my life, to talk to me, to try to start shit with me. Um, and that's why I am litigious AF. I don't play that. Okay? I don't play that. And I will, um, I'm going to be doing a part two. So make sure y'all join my membership group because it's about to go down. Like I'm about to reveal some stuff up in the group with how I move and why I move the way that I move. Um, I will be adding some of my laws of power, you know, so I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to really be spilling. Okay. My tea, honey. Okay. On, you know, why I am the way that I am. Um, but yeah, he's definitely a baiter. He definitely like got information from people, you know, and you you just can't go around trusting everybody. That's not the world that we live in. It's not. And I know some people are like, yeah, but these people are victims. Yeah, you know, you are the victim. But it's like when this shiggity keeps happening, Claudia, Claudia, I'm talking to Claudia Jordan. Can somebody get Claudia Jordan on the line? When this keeps happening to you, people, you know, they're not going to keep feeling sorry for you. You you are, what, 50 plus, and you still, like, getting baited, and, you know, and don't get me wrong, you guys. I know, you know, it's a tough world out here, but you got to change up your formula. So I'm going to get off into that in a minute. Tisha said on a few platforms that Kiki was dead to her. Yeah, yeah. And now all of a sudden, oh, I wish I could turn back the hands of time. And girl, if you could turn back the hands of time, you should have been checking your damn husband with him alluding to, you know, Kiki being an addict. But she never did that. She was complicit in her silence. She was okay with it. Just like she's okay with her mother bullying, you know, her castmates. Remember when Miss Wanda used to come at Kimmy all crazy? Because Kimmy wasn't siding with Tisha, and Tisha felt like she was so wrong. See, y'all see the entitlement with Tisha? Yeah, you know, if, if, if you are my sister-in-law, you need to be on my side all the time. And, and Mel is a mean girl. What are you? Okay, but she never looks at self. And this is right before Kiki died. Um, She did that interview with Dustin. Nope, I don't plan on ever talking to Kiki again, which I said in my other video. That's fine. It's fine. Okay, it's fine to feel like that. Life happens. You know, you probably didn't know she was going to go. She probably didn't know she was going to go. I understand you were protecting yourself boundaries, right? But when you, when you get online and you begin, I don't know, like putting up these posts and that's what people do. They try to placate to social media to use situations to become likable because Tisha is not liked by people and that really bothers her. It doesn't bother her enough for her to do something about it, something constructive, something that serves her, you know, something that can actually get people to like her. But yeah, she she's trying to take this situation with Kiki to try to get the public's sympathy, you know, oh, woe is me. My cousin did me wrong. I had to set boundaries. Now we can never work it out. You didn't want to work it out. 
And Kiki, quiet as kept, was done with her. And I don't blame Kiki because Tisha is no good. She's one of those people. She doesn't want you doing better than her. And she always resented that Kiki was on the same show as her. Okay, and if it wasn't male, you guys, it was going to be somebody else. She wanted Kiki to be aligned with her. Remember, Kiki needs to take her side all the time. Kiki is letting male use her. She neg- She's negating that they had a relationship, that they were cordial, that they were cool. They got mutual friends. What is that when you over there with Destiny? What is that? She came on the show through Mel and Martell. But do you see what I'm saying? That's okay, though. Invaders, they live through double standards. It's okay for them to talk to other people about you like a dog. But if if you do it, you are so nasty and so rude. And honey, that's what Claudia was telling the people about Al. Al is is a old messy poo. He is two-faced. Okay? He was Claudia's good Judy, her good girlfriend, and Funky came around, and then uh, Al started to throw Claudia under the bus and tell her secrets. That's what the people is saying, honey. Their words, not mine. Okay? Don't judge the messenger. <laughs> But they always end up uh, judging the messenger. Okay, Mel didn't cuss Kiki out, call her out her name, nothing. She simply said they sat on a plane together for two hours from Texas to Alabama. Oh, and I want to clear something up. Melody is from Alabama. Yeah, I think one of you all mentioned um, she's from Georgia. But no, I think I heard her say she had like one light or something. Like she's from a real, real small town in Alabama. So yeah, she's not from Huntsville, but yeah. Kiki should have kept it real with her. Conversely, Kiki didn't go out here and badmouth Mel after falling out. She understood and stayed silent. Yeah, Kiki always said Mel tried to look out for her and we seen it. We've seen it, unlike what other people tend to do. True. Um, they would have been fine in the future had Kiki lived. It's thanks to Mel, we all got to know Kiki because she fast-tracked Kiki's appearance on the show despite the objections of others. Yeah, Tisha kept trying to use Kiki's addiction to keep her stagnant. Um... Even as she's healing, which I got to understand what life is, none of us is perfect. Okay? And there's no such thing as the right time. It was never probably going to be the right time. You know, she, to me, she had just as much as common sense as anybody else. Like, she was good enough. Yeah, she she had her issues, and I know some people are saying, oh, well, you know, she really should have been in therapy. And yeah, but you got to get about your business, right? You got to get out here. You got to take chances. You know, being on this show is a big opportunity, and I'm glad that she was on it. I, I really like Kiki. Um... I have grace for Tisha and maybe even Marceau. I don't. Nope. They just as bad as Miss Wanda. Just as bad. And I told y'all, I think that Wanda does what a lot of family members do. You know, they they get their um they get to telling their daughter, you know, oh the the other girls are just jealous of you. We saw it on Married to Medicine. I know some of y'all will disagree with that, but I would catch Miss Lucy telling Mariah, oh they're just jealous of you. See, you're not you're not doing your daughter a service when you tell her people are just jealous of her. They may be the case sometimes but not all, and it it prevents the child from looking deep within on what what do I need to work on, like, how do I make other people feel, and hey, I really need to work on myself, I just can't go out here pointing the finger, that's what a victim does, and that's why I can't do Tisha, and I even liked it when Mariah was like, mama, don't say that, don't, because Mariah, I think, 
had enough sense, right? Had enough sense some of the time to be like, mama, that's not it. They are saying this because of this. Everything ain't just because they jealous of me. Because some parents will tell you that shiggity to blow smoke up your ass, okay? And have you walking around here with your ass up on your shoulders, but yeah, I like that Mariah didn't play into that, you know, and she did sometimes, <laughs> okay, but yeah, sometimes Mariah was like, Ma, don't say that, I don't want to hear that, because I know it's more, you know, to the story, and, but does Letitia think that far? No, mm -mm. she the victim, and it's everybody else, and see, when you're going around acting like that, you are the problem, you are the common denominator, I have nothing for Wanda, Lord help me. I just can't believe an aunt can be cruel as to say some of the things she said about her own niece. Yeah, she pitted these girls against each other. That's what she did. And her and Tisha, they want to have this narrative of, oh, Kiki just wanted Tisha's life. Tisha still don't have her office. Tisha just um rehabilitated that house okay <laughs> that's that they in it's now you know it's, it's looking good for them to, for them to be millionaires honey okay and their place is fine you know it's just you can't go around saying you millionaires and then your shit is tight like mine and, and you got all this money like make it make sense okay so yeah that's the thing with them they put too much dip on their chip and both of them are Libras, dark-sided Libras, if you ask me. Um, in my opinion, I do not believe Stormy care for Kiki. How can she care for Kiki and turn around giving money to the content creator who tried to destroy her reputation? Child, people link up with people for all type of reasons. She probably wasn't even thinking about Kiki. Okay, when she, I don't know why the hell she has anything to do with AL. I don't have that answer, but I don't think she, I think that Stormy did care for Kiki because I noticed when other people was done with her or didn't speak up for her, Stormy was always like, no, I believe she's clean. I believe she's trying to do better. I believe she's genuine. I like her. She got to know Kiki. Because at first she came in like on, you know, being all on Tisha's side. And then she got to see that Latifah, she still. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she copy and paste ideas, honey, and, and shipping addresses, honey, that don't belong to her. But leave it up to Tisha. Tisha says, honey, it was the website designer, developer, the website developer, allegedly. We'll say that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, everybody feels bad for Kiki and, you know, it's, it's sad, you know, but. I'm glad, you guys, that we got to experience her. Because what a firecracker, honey. Kiki kind of reminded me of one of my aunts. Like, you just know you was going to have a good time when she came around. You just you just know it's about to be entertainment, honey, okay? But, yeah, like I said, she threw that damn drink, though. I said, oh, bitch. Oh, Oh, she makes, I know Carlos was giddy as hell, like, bitch, I like this girl, I'm telling you, Kiki is a producer's dream, because you just never know what she's gonna say, or what she's gonna do, come on, bitch, come on, <laughs> she tell Mars, when I tell you I rewatched all that shit, it was just so funny, and and Tisha thought she was getting getting over. Oh, I'm gonna ignore her. Oh, I'm a yeah, trying to do to Kiki what her husband do to her. Okay, girl, bye. But I believe Marceau put that battery up in her back, and he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have got it in the middle of you know her family issues. Yes, he's her husband; he could support her. But don't get too deep into because they stuff go back since they was kids, right? And they were pitted against each other by um, Miss Wanda. And, and you know, I, I'm not really sure about who on Kiki's side, but I know Miss Wanda was, uh, you know. Yeah, Tisha, she think that, um, 
she thinks she better than you, and, you know, she just jealous of you, and you gotta watch her, and what's the other weird shit she was saying, you can't, you can't trust the bitch that when she buys shoes, that she don't buy shoes in a box, okay, she buy the shoes out the box, I was like, child, a whole mess of a fool, a whole fool of a mess, A.L. is doing damage control. Mel gave Kiki the opportunity to live out her dreams of being on TV, and A.L. got her fired. Yeah. You know? Um, But like I said, like I said, you know, we have to take accountability for the choices and decisions that we make, even when we have the best intentions. So without further ado, let's get off into Claudia. Now... I watched Claudia's video um, that she did with uh, Carlos King. I watched it. And very good interview. It seemed like, though, TGIF, honey, was canceled right after this aired. And I knew that that was going to happen. I knew it. I knew it was done after that roast. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And yeah, everybody, I'm not going to lie, though. Um, My perspective on this has changed now that I'm kind of hearing more about Al and how problematic uh, he is. But according to Claudia, she feels like she is simply a victim of trying to get her friends jobs. And Al is a betrayer and a backstabber that plays both sides. So I guess, you know, he was struggling, you know, after the situation with Star Jones. And, you know, he was down bad. And they are saying allegedly, you know, he had some type of smug issue. We will, you know, put it like that. Um, And... He he's a bit of a social climber. That's what the people were saying. So he was cool with Claudia. She knew he needed a gig. She hooked him up, you know. And this is the thing, right? Even though you're friends with people, you still have to have boundaries. Even if you are married to people, you still have to have boundaries. Even if you letting little Troy hit that thing up on the weekend. (laughs) You still have to have boundaries. Okay? Claudia does not have boundaries. What I see in Claudia is, this woman is older than me, right? But she's going around, you know, woe is me. Everybody always does me wrong. And I felt bad for Claudia. I'm not gonna lie. There's a certain part I really felt for her because I have been through that and it's not a good feeling right um but Claudia girl you are the common denominator okay and even with the situation with Kiki and her mother and AL they have to still be accountable for going to that man because they're he had already, what, did some of this stuff to Mel. Am I not right, guys? Put in the comments. But didn't Kiki know about what this man did to Mel? I don't know why people will see what somebody did to somebody else and think that the experience is going to be different. This is the same thing with Sonny and Destiny and Moses. You sitting up here talking about Destiny as a side chick and, you know, she she out here, she was getting cheated on by Moses and he had a plethora of women. And you think, you know, because you have that ring, things are going to work out differently for you. And they're not. It hasn't happened yet, but, you know, just give it enough time. Like the old folks say, honey, keep living, okay? Or like my mama say, honey, it's just life. I used to hate what my mama would say. (laughs) It's just life, girl. Get it together. (laughs) But yeah, Claudia is way too damn old, to be having these issues. And I think that um, what I see in her, I, you know, I see the same thing in Kenya Moore. It's this, you know, I'm beautiful. And why would anybody do that to me? Because they can. 
because they can and you keep giving them the opportunity to do it because if you keep saying yeah i just keep giving all my friends jobs and that's the problem stop giving so-called friends jobs and i don't think this man was ever your friend i think he made you feel comfortable and you all were probably associates but yeah real friends they they don't do stuff like that they don't do stuff like that. And allegedly, you guys, Al has this reputation of screwing people over, screwing women over. Um, a lot of people found him problematic um, on TGIF, always siding with the man. People have accused him of being a misogynist. I still see the clips of him heavily going back and forth. I'm like, hey, what they going back and forth about? Okay, so let's see what some of the people are saying. Um, a roast amongst people that are not friends will never go well. Yeah, they were saying that Claudia put Armand up to the roast. And, you know, Claudia is a, a bit of a comedian. I think she um, used to be Lunel's protege. And, you know, Lunel taught her all types of tips and tricks on being funny. And, and like I said, Claudia is beautiful. She's well-spoken. Um, she's adaptable. You know, Claudia has been in the business for a long time. Okay. But Claudia, baby, um, you have to take accountability for the part that you play in situations. Because when you were on Real Housewives of Atlanta, you were an antagonist. And a lot of people thought I just disliked Claudia because she went against Nene. That's not it. I saw something in her where... We already had Kenya who was annoying and who was an antagonist, but Kenya knew when to shut the hell up or Kenya kind of figured when she went too far, the people would let her know and, you know, she would receive it and shut her ass up. But Claudia, it just, it felt like she was trying too hard. She was trying so hard to fit in and, you know, and... Even the girls were getting agitated. I, re I remember Nene and Portia and even Candy liked her, but Candy was like, okay, Nene, apologize. Let the shit go. Yeah, but Nene, just when you did that and Claudia, let it go. Come on, Elsa, let it go. Claudia also um, did herself a disservice when she took uh, Nini's idea, and I know some people will say, oh, yeah, well, Nini's not the only one that could come up with this show. And Nini's, um, you know, her idea was whack, and she couldn't get it up off the ground. And, yeah, but Claudia, <laughs> you still took somebody's idea, and you thought all of this was going to work out. And that's how I know that there is a lack of accountability on um, Claudia's part. You know, it, it it's a it's a lack of accountability, a lack of responsibility, and you gotta take responsibility for your behavior. See, there's no integrity in your behavior, and then you still expect to be rewarded. Catch. There's no integrity. You were willing to, you know, take somebody's idea, and then even... um in the interview with Carlos, she's just like, yeah, there were people that would, you know, make fun of the gays or really feel like the gays were an accessory. Who was you talking about? You were still trying to be sneaky. You were still trying to take shots and throw shade, subliminal shade. You, you didn't say anybody's name, but sweetie, we know who you all are who you're talking about. You're talking about the lady who you stole this concept from. What is it like with Nini? It's like you have this hard on for her. Okay? 
yeah, well, you know, I, I just didn't want the gays to, you know, the the G boys to be seen in that way. And I'm so much better than that. And I would never do that competition when you talk all like that. So, and to me, I think she's like in this imaginary, like, and Nini's not in the competition, but I always felt like Claudia was in a competition with Nini. I also used to feel like she was jealous of Portia. And I don't think, like, now she's jealous of Portia because now she see how messed up Portia is. But, like, when she was on that show, she just, how did she kept coming for Portia? For, like, no reason. Because Portia has every right to set a boundary with you if you're Kenya's friend. And she didn't already had to drag Kenya across that stage and set her straight. She has every right to set a boundary. That's what, that's what you're supposed to do. Okay. Not, oh, a friend of my enemy is going to be a friend of mine. No, we could be cordial, but that's something, you know, that I don't do. Like if you, you know, are friends with somebody I don't like, you know, I could be cordial with you. I don't know how close we're going to be, you know, it, you know, it depends on, on how much you talk and, and see the person, too. But, yeah, I'm just not about to be all that close with you. You can be friends with whoever you want to be, but I get to choose the amount of access you have with me. But, yeah, she kept, like, harassing Portia. Well, what's the problem? The problem is, bitch, you don't have any boundaries, and you get mad at the girls that do. <laughs> and that's why this situation keeps happening to you. Oh, I did this. I I brought a quarter of a million dollars, you know, and, and people that always feel like they need to go and get people jobs. And yeah, some of that shit is helping people out. But some of that may be you trying to prove your worth. Did you ever think about that? I think that Claudia's issues are more internal, you guys, than what she thinks. I think she's pointing her finger oh, they did this, and, you know, and then Funky had an experience with you, you know, and I did like how, you know, she didn't speak bad about Funky, she gave him his props about, you know, how talented he is, how funny he is, how intelligent he is, and I really, I adored all of that, that was cool, and she actually gave Funky a, a heads up. And, you know, let him know she would be doing this interview with Carlos. Okay, so one person says, unpopular opinion, Al is a low-key misogynist. He will use a black woman or a woman to elevate himself, but he quickly disposes of them. Yeah, that's a baiter. He only respects successful black men. I think it never set well with Al that Claudia was more successful than him. So every time Claudia spoke up, it felt like a slight to his manhood. If Claudia were a man, he would be brown-nosing to the highest degree. I, yeah, I don't like men like that. He would be making excuses for any bad behavior and keeping every secret. Black women, Al does not have your best interests at heart. Don't be fooled. And wasn't he really cool with, like, Jennifer Williams? Um, he used to be cool with Evelyn. Um, he was married to Star. He's cool with Nene, too. And they would sit up and be talking about Nene, and he wouldn't defend he wouldn't defend her all the time. So it's like, once again, what did you think you were going to get? Special special treatment? Okay. Another person says, I think the real villain is Al. He's sensitive as AF, and he plays both sides. He's not as pulled up as he wants the public to think. I believe every word Armand said, Claudia is an easy target to come after when the SHIT goes left, but she's not the villain here. I, I did kind of think she was the villain. 
and I still do. <laughs> I, I still do. And it's not completely Claudia's fault. It, it's her fault that she keeps setting herself up in the same situations over and over again. And I've been there before in my life, so I'm not here to, you know, fully judge her for that. There are things that I have did to sabotage myself, and I've had to dig in my own ass and be like, hey, we can't do this no more. No more. Honestly, after the Heavenly and Al argument, I lost respect for him. See, remember I told you guys about that. Armand, in my opinion, he didn't he didn't fit like Funky did. They had the show really should have been canceled after Funky left, or they should have just coughed up the damn money. Okay? That's what they should have did. Paid Funky the money and stop with this. That's how companies are. They're always trying to overwork you. Okay? They want to overwork you. Just stay at the two days a week and that's it. Quit with the, yeah, well, let's do five days and pay you all less. And no, if it don't make dollars, honey, it don't make sense. The roast was problematic because Armand made TGIF's Dirty Laundry public. And yeah, he was too immature. And I like him. I do. But he seems to be a a, a bit immature and kind of caught up in his own hype. Okay? Don't believe the hype. Um, so I don't know. Y'all put in the comments who y'all feel is the blame. I'm going to um, read to you all the definition of a baiter, okay? Because we talked about this. Okay, so signs you're dealing with a baiter. So they see the world through a lens of arrogant entitlement and frequently treat people as targets. So this one is hard for most people to grasp. People tell me all the time, I hear you, but I just don't get it. But you have to understand that baiters don't live in the same world you do. Their world is defined solely by their own needs and desires. Other people and other people's needs and desires just aren't real to them. You might approach a situation simply to enjoy it, learn from it, or just to do it for the sake of doing it. The baiter is always on the make, looking for a way to capitalize. A lot of these people are so crooked that they have to screw their socks on in the morning and they can't not victimize people if they see an opening oh chow al is this you brother okay they will lie when the truth would do better because it is just in their nature okay and by the way, they're not going to feel any worse about it than they would crossing the street, okay? This type of behavior, it comes to them, you guys, like breathing, okay? Those are non-emotional events to them. If they find an angle to get ahead, they will do it and do it on top of you. Is that what happened, Claudia? If they can cheat you or hurt you or your loved ones to gain some advantage, they will without a blink. The goal is getting the advantage, not nurturing some relationship with you. So oftentimes when, you know, relationships end and they go awry, you will see the intentions of that person. And, you know, I'm fortunate, fortunate enough to still be on good terms with the first man I ever had sex with. You know, my, my first love, like, you know, and that's how I know the love is real after all these years, after, you know, everything we've been through, because it, it sure as hell was not perfect. But I never seen him try to backstab me, sabotage me. I never heard of him talking ill, you know, about me to, you know, mutual friends. We had a lot of mutual friends where as, you know, in my past, I've seen other guys do that. Try to break into my email, even tag themselves into my email. 
went and talked to all my enemies and told them my business and lied and put me down and tried to make themselves look good like scandalous, felonious, okay? And people that engage in that behavior are very nefarious to me, very diabolical, very, you know, demonic, okay? So, yeah, you know, these people feel entitled. So, you know, as you're living life, just pay attention to people that feel entitled to you, that want to start arguments, you know, with you, that may be talking to other people, mutual friends or coworkers about you. You really, you got to pay attention to them. This is something that goes over the top of, like, this goes over people's heads. Pay attention to people that stare at you. Something that I realized is people that have screwed me over have stared at me. They've had, like, this blank stare. People think I'm crazy when I say this because they'll be like, yeah, but everybody can stare and look at you, and who are you? And No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just always staring and shit. It's like, what the hell is you looking at? You ain't looking at me, shit. (laughs) You're not even looking at me. It's like you looking through me. You trying to... Have you ever seen somebody like size you up and they're kind of like judging you and looking at your car and looking at you and how you're dressed and just just every little thing. People that try to pick you apart or always got some negative to say, that's a toxic person. I don't care. Y'all know I don't do the family thing and all that. Um... Ooh, child, this video is long, but honey, it's going to be good. Ms. Robinson go preach a sermon. Hallelujah. Can I get a boom shakalaka? <laughs> but, um, yeah, if they get an angle to get ahead, they will do it right over top of you. So, yeah, what Claudia was saying in the interview with Carlos, it just sounds like, you know, she's always looking out for people. But you know what? I ne- I didn't, I did not hear her. I may need to go back, but I never heard her say, oh, I'm going to stop doing that. Or, oh, I need to stop. See, you have to, when you when you're trying to change something, first you have to change yourself. You can't change other people. You got to change how you move. Because you got to look at it. You are the common denominator. Okay? Common denominator. So it says, to protect yourself from these people, you have to understand their motivations and think like they do. But never think they are not plotting at your expense or at least scanning for an opening. It's simply who they are. It is as natural to them as brushing their teeth. Okay? If a baiter is hired at your workplace and you have the job he actually wants, that's just a locked door to him. You're just an obstacle to get past. Look at Sonny, Moses, and Destiny. I think about how Destiny, you know, mentioned how Sonny was always in close proximity, you know, to Moses. If a homewrecker wants your husband to her, you're the problem she has to overcome. Your marriage means nothing to her. Ain't that right, Ariane Curry? That shit was turning that girl on. She didn't stay messing with Martell for all those years for no reason. She saw the wife. She saw how beautiful she is, how accomplished she is. And she thought in her head, yeah, you know, I'm able, you know, to fuck her man. And I'm going to keep doing it. What did she say? I I took her nigga with my eyes closed. And she meant every bit of that. But look, look at her now on the bench. Got, she got come all up in her eye. (laughs) Egg on her face. How you doing? And got a baby and you on that bench and you still ain't been able to secure that man. Okay? So, yeah, these people, you know, they they will use other people to come up. And I think Ariane thought that messing with Martell and, you know... And these women, it, they're not just with these men for the men. They love competing and, and comparing themselves to the women that they may be involved with. I've had many a man have some, like, 
ex or something. And, you know, the bitches starts following me on social media and sending messages. Yeah. These women, these baby mamas, these ex-girlfriends, if the man has told, you know, the woman stuff about you, they get obsessed and they get in competition and they like, it's, it's crazy. Okay. These people have a sense of entitlement. Remember I said that about everything, no matter what it is or who possesses it, their attitude is, this is mine and you just have it currently. Okay. That's how they think. And once um, Melody left Martell, or, you know, it was like, yep, we really about to make this baby. And it'll be a revenge baby, okay? So they will team up with your ex. And that girl was even in on the revenge pee, we'll say allegedly. But she asked Carson, you know, what should I do? See, this should, this should show you how sinister some people are, how desperate they are how desperate certain women are for the attention and the love of a man. And you ain't never like, he, now he probably didn't pay you some attention, but he damn sure ain't showed you no love. And just because a, a man stayed dealing with you for years, that does not mean he love you. Actions speak louder than words. And just because somebody's screwing you, okay, and you all hunched over, that don't mean nothing. Okay, he has never gave that girl a title, but baby mama, period. That's why I had an issue with Carlos when he sat on his ass at that reunion. Yeah, I think she's the whole damn restaurant. And I said, I think she's the goddamn trash can in the restaurant. That's how I felt. He don't feel nothing for her. Yeah, but, and you heard Kimmy, yeah, I just think he feels guilty for the feelings he has, and then I heard some other content creators, yeah, it was a real, it was a real relationship, ain't no, anything that, if you are not the wife, you are simply being fucked, I don't care how long it go on, yeah, but he really loved her, why wouldn't he stop, and he wouldn't stop because he's a fucking narcissist that wanted to control. That is the intention with a narcissist, to control. That is it. That is all. You don't need to go any further, okay? You don't need to read the whole book to know how the story ends. He's a controller, period, okay? Ain't no, well, that was a real, that was a real, how, how the hell you gonna have a relationship with somebody else's husband? cut it out. You didn't have access to that man all the time. So it's not a real relationship. I'm not even going to give it the words or the enunciations or pronunciation. I'm not, <laughs> you're not going to get that. Okay. Up out of me. I'm not going to be like the rest of these people. You cannot, I am here to tell you, you cannot have a relationship with somebody else's husband. Okay. You just, you're not going to be the girlfriend. You can't, because you don't have access to him like that. And yeah, some of these niggas ain't faithful and ain't no good. But what they did to one, they will do to the next and the next. Now, there are some situations where, you know, the man end up with a complete, you know, with another woman and he may not do her like that. It may be a situation where he loves her more and he respects her more and that whole thing. That does exist, but that ain't what we talking about. Now, the reason why a baiter will screw you over, lack of empathy. Okay? Baiters are cold. It's not that they don't share your feelings, which is what sympathy is all about. They don't have any regard for or understand your feelings or human feelings in general in the first place, which is what empathy is all about. It never occurs to them how you might be hurting or suffering because of what they did Tisha she never cared what she said or did to Kiki how they kept assassinating her character and kept trying to limit her to only being some type of an act you know some type of uh, of an addict you know that just has a problem oh I don't believe nothing you say I don't want to hear nothing you you got to say about my husband you still using that stuff I'll just use that as your identity that way I can get around once again running away from what somebody's trying to tell you 
And that's what she was doing when she was ignoring uh, Kiki at that table. And Kiki had enough of that shit. She tried to call Tisha. She tried to meet Tisha in person to have a conversation. She tried to talk to her at the damn barbecue. She said, that don't work. How about some water on your face? Okay, I bet your ass listen now. And then all of a sudden, what did you see Tisha doing? All of a sudden talking to Kiki. Okay, but people skip right over that. You should have talked to her. That's what you should have did. You should have said something. You being immature. Um, these baiters will betray this deficiency if they are taken beyond a scripted response. They may know how to mimic empathy, repeating what they have heard others say. Yeah, they will pretend. Okay, don't I know it? I had somebody up in my face. Oh, I feel bad for you. And But then it started to hit me with some of the stuff that they were saying. I remember this one person said, yeah, but didn't that person show you how they felt about you by not doing this and this and that? And I'm like, huh? The hell? How the hell are you blaming me? <laughs> Okay, well, didn't they show you? No, ain't no, you just show me. Okay, you have a conversation. Having a conversation is respect. Opening up communication. People are not mind readers. Respect. Okay? Not, oh, I'm gonna fuck you over and treat you any kind of way and have you in a puddle of confusion. Okay? In a ball of confusion. Shout out to the Temptations, honey. And I'm going to leave you to figure out everything. You don't do people like that. When you do that to people, don't be surprised when that shit comes back on you. And these people always get their karma. Okay? Some of these people may have a history of being cruel to animals. You may see them behave coldly and unconcernedly. If, for example, you are driving together and see a puppy in traffic or hear a story about an animal being hurt or injured beyond a script, they will show you callousness without even being aware they've tipped you off. Listen and watch and they will out themselves soon enough. Yeah, they will begin talking crazy to you. Okay? They will talk if you share any information with them. And that's probably what Al was doing, sharing different um, confidential information. And maybe Claudia was sharing with him. He was telling the new co-host, Funky, or whoever would listen. And that's what Claudia alluded to with her interview with Carlos. Like, you know, him telling my business and, you know. She probably gonna do a part two now that the show canceled, honey. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, they are incapable of feeling remorse, skill, and don't learn from situation to situation. They don't. They don't they don't feel bad. And they will weaponize your vulnerabilities and turn it on you. So for instance, if you say to that person, that person, you know, they cheated on me or, or that person, they lied to me about, you know, who they were in relationship with. And that, that same, that baiter will turn around and be like, yeah, that per he just wanted her more than he wanted you. He just didn't want you. See, everything is to knock you down a peg and lower your self-esteem because they want it on the first floor like theirs is. They want you to question and doubt yourself. They want to tear you down and lift their weak asses up, okay? And I told you there, there are cowards that really do move that way. Um... Okay, so how can they do the things they do? Because they pursue pure gratification without fear of consequence or without the burden of conscience. They do not have the ability to feel guilt or sorrow. They do not have the capacity to feel bad about what they have done. Think about that. If they never get a signal from their brain that says stop, then why would they ever do so? Someone who lacks empathy has no conscience, feels no remorse, also lacks an understanding of normal human cause and effect. Okay? They don't care. 
um, another sign they are a baiter. They are irresponsible, self-destructive, and they have a disregard for the being of others. Okay, baiters are so self-centered. How can they also be self-destructive? The answer is precisely because they have an unreal sense of their own power. They also do not register consequences. That's why some of them end up being felons, okay? To them, everyone else is a fool, but they never are themselves. So if they do something reckless and get themselves hurt, they don't learn and not to do it again. Because after all, it just couldn't have been their fault. Who does that sound like? Tisha. I didn't do nothing wrong. It's what that person, Mel, got a dark soul. She's the one that did it to me. Okay, Kimmy is the bad sister-in-law. She don't want to be my friend no more. She don't want to be my friend. If she don't want to be my friend, she ain't got to be my friend. She can't even be her real self. That's why Kimmy is now playing a different role to Tisha. And it's it's not going to be good in the long term. It's just not. Like I said, those Scott brothers, they sat her down and was like, girl, you need to get on board and you need to have Tisha back and, and don't let Mel, I'm pretty sure they said it, don't let Mel get in between y'all relationship. Okay, even though Tisha is very immature. Okay. Okay. They don't just deceive other people. They deceive themselves into thinking that they are special, that they are not subject to normal cause and effect. They don't believe the rules apply to them. Another sign you're dealing with a baiter is they thrive off of drama and crisis. Um, and whether Claudia wants to admit it or not, I feel like I heard her say something in an interview uh, and I think she's, what, an Aries or something, and, you know, that's a very social sign, um, but, girl, you keep ending up in this situation, and contrary to popular belief, there may be something that you like about all of this, like meeting new people and helping them out or maybe feeling responsible for their success. If you give them a job or help them out, they will always have to depend on you and you could take the credit. There is something you are like getting out of all of this because I refuse to believe a 50 plus year old woman would keep ending up in these situations year after year. Okay. Like I said, you don't need to, like, try to work with friends all the time. Not if you value the relationship. That's a boundary you may need to practice. It's a boundary to not talk, you know, with other people about somebody you're having an issue with. Maybe you need to, you know pull that person to the side and, and have a direct conversation with them. But I don't know. I... For some reason, for some reason, I feel like whatever she's ac accusing Al of doing, she does it. But when you're not accountable and responsible for your own behavior, you will always point the finger at other people. Okay? So, yeah. Um... It goes on to say some people need drama to feel alive. That's how a lot of narcissists are. That's why they go along in, in gaslight situations and, and tear up relationships. And they love arguing, elevating their voice. And they will even tell you that I love to debate. No, you love to argue. Okay. I had, I had one of them tell me that. You don't like to debate. No, because I already know that I'm right about what I'm thinking and what I'm talking about. And I already know not to go that far with you because you're not on my level in the first damn place. Okay? So I'll be looking at people like, yeah. 
you just not, you know, my equal like that, okay? I'm trying to have a, a mutual exchange of Venus and Serena, a tennis match when I debate. Not, I'm up here and, you know, you down here on the first floor trying to, like, have the last word and argue and, and you know, like, I'm not about to do that with you. Like, I only, like, argue with people that I really, really care about, okay? So, um, drama and crisis are currency to them because they love the power to make people react. They love, and that's what that person wanted to do with me. They didn't want to have a healthy debate. It, they wanted me to believe all of what they had to say, and we're not doing it. Um... They thrive off of a good fight, good scandal, good trauma. And before these people went on hiatus, they did a roast. Maybe y'all shouldn't have did that. Um, do you really think it was appropriate when y'all are not getting along and, you know, there's so many issues, you know, that y'all have swept under the rug and, like, Y'all did not have a a solid foundation. And now she kept saying, I got to save my baby. I got to say, if you was really trying to save your baby, would you really be doing this interview? See, you got to look at your, your intentions. Okay. So she could have probably spoke out on this. I'm just saying, do it, you know, after you get back to work or after, you know, after they didn't cancel the show. Now people didn't see this interview. Now the show is canceled. Um, most people learn the difference between assertiveness and aggressiveness. They're brought up by their parents to understand that it's okay to assert their own rights, but it's not okay to be aggressive and trample on other people's rights. Exactly. Exactly. That made me think of these men in the workspace that are so codependent and needy. And Well, you should smile. Well, you should talk to me today. Well, you should shut up. Anything that starts out with what I should be doing shouldn't be coming out of your damn mouth. You're not my boss. And, you know, they never told me when I was filling out the job application that I owe any of you niggas attention. Okay, I can't tell y'all how many jobs where I done been at or been at the supermarket. Yeah, you should smile. You should do the shut up. Okay, shit, pay these bills. Okay, you ain't put in on this, man. Okay, so yeah, fellas, please stop doing that shit. Y'all look stupid and um, it's not cute and it's not fair. People don't owe you a... A performance. A woman that does not belong to you doesn't owe you a performance. Go get that from your mother or your woman. Okay? Baiters never learn lessons. Instead, they start acting out when they can't get their way. Yep. Um, they are often very angry and arrogant, which just shows below the surf below the surface. Over time, their lack of impulse control and inability to relate to other people as human beings keep landing them in hot water. They have a low tolerance for frustration, a low threshold for engaging in aggression and poor impulse control. This leads them into frequent conflicts with authority figures such as teachers law enforcement supervisors at work okay and this is a a workspace so claudia needs to learn the difference between you know somebody being a friend and a co-worker and you know you gotta have boundaries with people you you know and you know you just, you got to have your boundaries. You do. I, I get you care about people. You want to help people. But you have to first determine, Claudia, if the relationship is worth it. But it made me feel bad. Um, 
And really quickly, let me read some of these other ones. It says that baiters brag about outsmarting people. They they brag about cheating and being dishonest. And they have a pattern of short-term relationships. And they live in a fantasy world marked by delusion. Okay? And they often have a very self-serving agenda. I just wonder, like, did Al Reynolds have any of these red flags? But what I will say is this. I felt bad for Claudia um, because she had mentioned that she felt disposable in her relationships with men and in her friendships. She felt disposable. And, um, you know, it's just like, why does this, you know, keep happening to me? But like I said before, Claudia has to learn to take accountability for what she's doing and not doing in these friendships. Um, Claudia said that she feels like she can be used for opportunities, but when it comes to friendship, people discard her and they throw her away. Claudia also mentioned that, you know, it's happened in her relationships with men. Um, she's good enough to be a look for the man. And you know what, what really hit me is why would you settle to be in a relationship like that? Um, wasn't it Nene that said the thing about her clit leaving her body? I think that was a read or Claudia gets around, you know, and what I will tell, you know, any young lady is don't do all that. Um, don't do all that sleeping around because this is the thing, right? I'm very realistic on, you know, on my platform. And I understand that sometimes, you know, people are grown and they engage in casual sex. Sometimes they don't want a relationship and they, you know, they, they want to have protected sex. That's fine. Right. But my young ladies, I feel like, um, I don't know. When I look at Claudia, I see somebody that is very beautiful. Claudia is stunning, but I just wonder, did she ever use her looks, you know, to get with certain men or like, why do you feel so disposed of? Did you have all this sex with them? Did you sleep with them on the first night? See, when we are engaging in that type of behavior with men, a lot of times they feel like that gives them license to disrespect and dispose of you and discard you, okay? And they dispose of you because they feel like you are disposable. It doesn't mean anything. So I, I think that Claudia should be more self-reflective of some of the choices maybe she has made in her life. Um, you know, she kept saying, yeah, I'm independent. And, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't do, you know, do what this person did. And I never fell for the, the man paying my bills. And yeah, but you, you know, but you kept throughout the interview, you kept trying to get Carlos to pay for your meals. So, you know, you can't get mad that others have taken that route, you know? And I feel her, you know, you pay your own bills and you look out for self, you know? But I don't know, something about that just kind of said that to me, like maybe she feel like, damn, I should have, you know... I should have got somebody to pay my bills. and But see, when, you know, when you do overly rely on men to pay your bills and all of that, there's a certain upkeep to that, and you got to deal with them, and, you know, so. But, yeah. 
So, yeah, she went on to say she feels like she's easily disposable to people and, um, you know, once they get what they can get and that hurts. And I really felt bad for her. I remember when I first seen that, um, I felt bad for her. Like, damn, that's really messed up. You know, it's a really messed up place um, to be in because you do all you can to help people and you, you want people, you want to bring people to where you are at mentally, professionally, emotionally. You want people to win and they, you know, they stab you in the back and, you know, this keeps happening and but you have to look at the people you are trying to help and you really got to look at them through an objective lens. I once had a friend, an old friend, that kept telling me, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, good women out here and don't know, you know, don't nobody want a good man. And don't get me wrong, it's some of that out here and, you know, on the other side of the coin too, you know, it's some of that out here. But at the same time, you know, life is a game and you have to play or you're going to get played. For instance, this same friend, um, this same friend would just allow, you know, allow the women to play with him and, you know, you up here getting folks hair done, you up here paying folks bills you up here, um, and what are you getting out of it? And I'm like, are you in relationship with the woman? Like, what's going on? Y'all just messing around? Well, no, I ain't even, um, I ain't even hit yet. Well, what the hell you doing? Okay. (laughs) And it's crazy because I would have to, I would have to have a different conversation with my male friend, right? I'm like, you ain't even getting none of that cootie cat. Man, she won't let me get nothing. Well, it ain't no need to give your ass nothing. I'm like, nigga, you getting played. <laughs> what what Tupac say to uh Chicago and Pointing Justice? Shit, how much of that cootie cat she giving up? Nigga, you ain't handling nothing. <laughs> but yeah, you know, and it's just like And I kept hearing this sob story over and over from him, you know, and I felt bad. This is my friend. And, you know, I was always the friend where it's like, I want you to win and I'm going to keep listening to these stories. And after a while, the stories, they get old and you have to be honest with your friend and let them know you are playing the game wrong and you are the reason why you are losing and so many people they don't want to hear that because we live in a society where people love playing the victim first off stop giving these women money and they don't even have a title and two you ain't getting no cootie cat so what is you doing okay and he was like, yeah, I was trying to hold something. I said, it looked like you ain't been holding nothing but your damn hand. Okay, but your damn dick. Okay, shit. That ain't how you hold something. Okay, so, yeah, just, yeah, I bought her food and her kids. For, uh-uh, you being too nice. Uh-uh. And what's the time limit that you doing all these things? Oh, I'm doing that within 30 days. Uh-uh, too much, too soon. Just like a woman, you don't. And sometimes, you know, things may work out for certain people. See, everything depends on the people that you're dealing with and their true intentions towards you. Behavior reflects intentions, okay? So, this isn't everybody, but for the most part, you know, when you work a job, right, do they give you benefits right away or do you have to work towards those benefits? Okay. Do they give you raises right away on that first day, on the second day, on, on a weekly basis? No, you got to be with the company and prove yourself. So you have to do the same thing with your dating life and make people prove themselves to you. And I think what I see when I look at Claudia is, 
she played off of her beauty. Same thing with Kenya Moore. Played off her beauty. I'm beautiful. And that's what the girls do. You know, I'm beautiful and then that's it. And we don't work on ourselves. And we don't keep ourselves honest and say, hey, I need to work on my insides. I need to make sure I am leading with my heart and not my body and my face. And and don't get me wrong. It's okay to feel yourself and know you beautiful and tell the girls it is okay. Okay. But I think that's the gimme, gimme gotcha of it all. Right. But yeah, that's what that so-called friend, you know, that's what that friend was telling me. Oh, I'm just such a good person and just people don't want good people. No, you are offering up yourself. You're not saying that you are worth much by how you are giving and giving and giving and you're not getting. Okay. In any relationship, it should be mutually beneficial. There is some giving, there's some getting. There's some giving, there's reciprocity. That's how it should be. And that is how you teach people how to treat you. You don't just be so nice and be so nice. And and see, all that being nice shit is y'all not having no boundaries. You not having no standards. And you know you ain't got no standards because look at what you've been putting up with. Well, no, no, he he swore up and down. I don't allow people to play me, shit. Uh, it, nigga, it's too late. Shit, what you talking about? You, you ain't gonna let nobody play with you. Oh, she been playing with your ass. She been taking, she been at the amusement park with your ass, taking your ass for a ride, and you ain't got up off the ride yet and went to the bathroom and collected yourself. Okay, so no, don't do all of that. All of that reads desperate. Like throwing yourself. Me and my daughter was just watching Love and Basketball and I explained to her how Monica was acting, how Monica's character was acting, and how Gabrielle Union's character was acting with Q. And Gabrielle Union's character got played because all she wanted to do was roll in the bed with him. And Monica wanted a real relationship. She ended up being his wife and the mother of his child because she played the game, no pun intended, differently. Okay, men are checking that out too. Okay, and no, I'm not going to use the this for Sonny and because De- Sonny is over there doing some nasty work over there. My man, my man, if it's your man, you ain't got to tell everybody about it. What he's saying, coolie, hi, you ain't got to make no speech. Shit, okay, shut the hell up. Shut the hell up and get back to work. But, yeah, so, yeah, that friend, though, he was getting ready to, you know, oh, I'm just such a good person. Oh, I am I was like, shit, you ain't ever did all that for me. And I don't plan on taking my drawers off for you, so, you know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I'm a good friend to you. You ain't never bought all of this and did. See, we be doing the wrong shit for the wrong people. Okay, you got to do the right shit for the right people, for the right reasons. So stop giving to people that ain't giving you nothing. I could see if at first it looked like it's fair exchange and and they helping you out and then down the line, you know, things go awry, they end up playing you and you didn't see the shit coming. That could happen. I get that. But you just, and Claudia strikes me, okay, I don't have the proof, but she strike me as somebody that was having a lot of casual sex sex and was out here um and 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 that's when she was coming for Porsche oh she got that truck and I never understood that shit never understood her and King oh she got that from that man and um that's better her getting shit from a man is better than her over there what being married to a man and having to pay his taxes Okay, and we're going to exclude the whole Simon situation, honey, because Simon is a savage, honey, okay? (laughs) But I'm just saying, I just never understood Claudia, how she was aggressively coming at Portia. Well, is that, that shit is weird to me, shit, okay? Bitch able to get a car, a house, uh, even Marlo got her, I'm not mad at the girls that's able to do it, do it, okay? Do it, I would rather you do that than some shit for free and get played, 
Okay. So, yeah, I always felt like she had a resentment from women that was able to get material items out of men, and she wasn't able to do that. But she'll sit up here and tell you, oh, I, that's just not who I am. And I see Claudia be in competition with people. She will never admit it. Same thing with the Nene thing. Oh, I don't like how she treat the gay boys, and I'm going to treat them so much better. How is it going for you? Because it don't look like they like you all like that. So how is that going for you, girl? Okay, so I hope you all have learned something from the from this uh, show, okay, with how people move, okay? You have to show up differently. You have to change what you allow, what you don't allow. You got to, can't be afraid to walk away from some people. You're going to have to walk away from people that you love. That's the hardest shit I have learned so far in life. Sometimes you have to walk away from some people that you actually love, but they don't have your best interests at heart. So Claudia girl, be your own friend and stop trying to work with friends. Stop trying to give friends jobs. Or if you do do business with friends, understand there's a way to do it. You can't be hanging with them or telling them all your personal business because it's going to spill over into the business. See, you have enough life lessons. Okay, that you can take from this TGIF situation, from what you did on Housewives. Why well, I just feel so misunderstood. You are no victim. There is a part that you are playing. Okay? It'll get better when you become better. All right, you guys, that's all I have to say about this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I am your girl, Brand New, and I will check you guys out in the next video.